When you're smiling, the whole world smiles with you. Here's your look at the DC collectibles. This is the Dark Knight's Metal, the Batman Who Laughs, and Robin Minions. Completing DC Collectibles Dark Knight's Metal statue line comes the final epic piece, the Batman Who Laughs and Robin Minions statue. Standing tall and imposing, surrounded by his three Robin Minions in chains, the Batman Who Laughs is here to haunt your nightmares. Whether on its own or with the other Dark Knight's Metal statues, this piece definitely represents the comic in the most iconic way possible while paying homage to Greg Capullo's design of the character. All right, kitties, before we get this review underway, the first necessary 411 I'd like to provide you guys, obviously, if you're looking to pick up this one for yourself, is how tall is this statue? It's surprisingly small, and yet when you look at the measurements, you'll still see it's a pretty tall statue. How does that make any sense? By comparison, I suppose, to the other statues that we usually get from DC Collectibles, this one seems a little on the smaller side, but... Again, when you kind of look at how tall it is, the tallest point being Batman, it still translates to an 8.6 inch tall statue. So that's still tall. It, I think it's just because it feels smaller when you look at the fact he's got the Robins all with him. I would have imagined this to be a taller statue. And the box certainly is smaller too. Nonetheless though, 8.6 if you're looking to pick up this one for yourself. If you're looking to pick it up for yourself and want to know that in centimeters, more than happy oblige, you're looking at the Batman Who Laughs Dark Knight's Metal. That's a bit of a tongue twister statue. For picking up for yourself in centimeters, you'd be looking at a figure statue standing at almost 22 centimeters in height, 21.9 to be exact. Yes, the statue does feel a bit small when you're looking at it. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on for it, which would probably justify why the price point on the statue is a lot higher than most statues this height. This one here in Canada was a little over $200. But for that, for $200, you're essentially getting, of course, the Batman Who Laughs, and you're getting his three Jokerized Robin minions all around him. You're also getting a pretty interesting looking base. I'm going to do my best to pick that up and be very careful with the statue. I don't really feel like all the characters are connected in place as best they should. But the base itself, if I can slightly t tip it up here, you're treated to a black hexagonal base with sort of a cult-like symbol along the top here and probably rather familiar looking logos of some of your characters you probably have noticed before like Aquaman and Batman and all that you can see them sort of uh, Batmanized that's not quite the word but you can kind of see like even like Aquaman has the bat logo you know for example uh, Cyborg has a Batman style logo to it. it's really interesting the way that they've done that the base itself is really quite thin I mean, taking up very little of a thick footprint. I mean, I guess for what it is and the sizing it needs to be, you don't really have to ask for too much of a base, but this one is one of the thinner ones of the statues we've looked at on this channel. An interesting touch that I quite like is the Robin that's in the foreground, the closest one to us. Yeah, that one right there. You can see how he's been clawing his way into the front of the base. And it's interesting the fact that that ties into the base itself. It's not just something that's standing on its own. And of course, you got the characters on top of that. He's bringing the base into that also as well. And I think that's a really neat looking touch. You'll, uh, excuse me if I don't really tip this upside down, just for risk that it's going to tip and knock some of the characters over. But underneath that, you would be treated to the whatever sequenced number. This one happens, I think, 168 out of the very limited release of 5,000 copies worldwide. You also are treated to some felt feet or rubberized feet on either of the corners. There's four actually in total to prevent any scratching on any surfaces that you just decide to display the statue on. Yeah, so as I was saying, there is some assembly, of course, that's required for this. You're going to have to put the three Robins on their respected base. And of course, you're going to have to put the Batman who laughs. We'll look at all of these individually. The assembly, though, of when you're putting them in, you sort of have to do two things. The first thing is obviously putting the characters on their bases. And they work on very, very thin pegs. I don't even want to really risk pulling them up. But the, the pegs are very, very thin. You can probably even see one right there. 
and you're also dealing with very small holes. So right off the bat, right out the gate, you're having to finagle very small pegs into very small holes. And each one of the characters, I mean, they don't feel like they're thick. You know, there, there's a lot of little thin elements to it. So things you really want to be careful of. The other thing you want to also be contending with is the fact that he also does come included with a real working chain. The chain attaches itself to uh, like a collar, like like a dog walking, essentially. He's walking his robins. And it attaches right here as one of those little pinch clamps. You pinch the side, you remember those? And they open up. It's a little clasp closure that has to loop onto the looplet there of the, the leash. That's the word I was looking for, the little leash here. But then each one of them also have to attach to the robin, as each one of the robins have also their own looplets. There's one right there. That, again, you'll have to pinch this and put this in place. There's one on this one, and then of course there's one on this one right here. I found, and take this only with what, take it with a grain of salt. Essentially, I what I did was I put the Batman Who Laughs down first, then I attached the chain to his leash uh, handle, then I attached it to each one of the robins before I put the robin down. Just because it was really difficult to kind of get underneath that and attach the closure in place. This one being one of the more difficult ones to do. But if I had the robins off first, it allowed me to kind of get that quite easily attached to the looplet. There it is again right there. And then once that was done, I simply just attached each one of the robins in place until eventually all three of them were on the base. First part of this statue we'll have a look at, though, is the quite ugly mug of the Batman who laughs. Sporting in his hand is, of course, his ball mace. Uh, you can actually remove it, as they do give you an alternate option. We'll bring that in right now. In favor of the mace, if you'd rather a firearm instead, he comes included with a Zenith Z5K, a semi-automatic pistol. Uh, as you can see, it's attached, well, you will see, it's attached by a peg. So we can go ahead and just remove the hand, just like that. No magnets here, unfortunately, they're all pegs. And you just take the replacement and you pop that in place. I don't know if it's just me, but I don't know if it suits, at least my own personal preference, having him with the submachine gun, the semi-automatic pistol in his hand. I think it better suits my taste, at least, by displaying him with the ball mace instead. And again, you just swap that out by just popping this off. There's a close-up look at the gun. Obviously, in the instructions, they don't tell you what it is, but it looks to be like a Zenith Z5K uh, semi-automatic pistol. And uh, as you can see, there's some gray that's been added to it. It's kept to a very minimal amount of paint, and the paint that they use to it kind of gives it more like a cell-shaded design, right down to the handgun. But again, I prefer, I prefer the mace myself. As you can see, the mace has been painted with a nice silver work done to the top there, whereas the handle has sort of been kept neutral to a more dark brown with some wrapping down about three quarters of the way down. I like though that the hammer looks like it's been used. The mace has been used. It looks very crude in design. Sort of looks like he's been forged it himself. And again, if you want to just attach that, there's a hole right there in his hand and that slides very easily into place. As I said though, we will start this review by looking at the face for the Batman Who Laughs. As you can see in sort of what I had mentioned already with the handgun, the face and really the rest of the characters that are on the base have very much a cel-shaded look to it, almost like an animated treatment. It works surprisingly quite well with a character like this, and especially when you have a look at the Robins, they all have a really interesting, more animated look to them right down to the fact that they have very solid areas in which it's been colored in very akin to what you would expect to find in the comics that open section where you have the shadowing done on the one side of the face very dark around the pointed section of his cowl right over his nose and then you've got the lighter areas there on the sides of his face you can see quite a disgusting smile from ear to ear with quite rather gnarly looking teeth. You can see that they're slimy and they're been painted over in like a brownish cream color. They're far from certainly being white. Of course, the Batman Who Laughs gets his trademark look. He does have this very tight, 
harnessed, almost corseted, long-tailed jacket. Broad shoulders, and as you can see, in the same way that we looked at the head, you have that real obvious shading that's been done on the shoulders down the sections of the sleeve where you can see like wrinkles developing and also down his legs as well. As we continue our way down passing the robins you can see the one little bit of area that doesn't get treated to gray nor black. He does have the soles of his shoes painted it in silver with really sharp jagged teeth like soles on the undersides of his boots. This is, of course, the area, the connector point with Batman Who Laughs connects into place. I can't quite completely get them all firmly planted. Batman Who Laughs sort of seems the more difficult of the bunch. It's there, but it's not quite completely there. I don't know if the intended use of these pegs is that they are supposed to be completely down into the holes. I don't know if maybe the soles would really prevent those pegs from sliding completely down into the holes. As you can see, there's a bit of a gap that's formed between Batman's feet and the base itself. Then we have a look at the Robins, each more ghoulish than the last. They have all unique, interesting aspects to them, right down to this one right here. I did notice, if I can pan this back slightly, obviously this one is supposed to be leaning off to the side, but he does feel like he doesn't seem as straight as he should be. I tried my best to make sure that he was completely firmly planted, and yet that's as best as it seems to be. I get really for the fact that the way that the statue is supposed to be intended to be displayed, obviously this particular Robin, this one right here, is supposed to be like leaning off, so he's sort of peering around the side of the Batman who laughs, but he sort of leans a little bit too much for my liking. As I had mentioned, each one of the Robins have, much like Batman, a more animated cell-shaded treatment to it. It's very simple in design and yet rather effective. You can see the green coloring done to the tops of Robin's hair. This particular Robin, they're all roughly dressed about the same. It very much does feel like something I would expect to see in the comics, this sort of animated style. Very bold black lines are really used for the panel lining. You can see that around the cheeks, around the wrinkles in the top sections of the Robin's head, and even in his suit is, itself, which you can also make out does have the rather familiar and haunting Robin logo there in the top corner. Utility belt is painted nicely in yellow, and again, just a really nice, yet very different portrayal of these characters. This one also, as you can see right here, each one of the chains very securely attached to place. They aren't going anywhere. Things that you want to be really careful on this particular statue are things like his fingers. Uh, the capes, for example, on this Robin's cape here. The tattered cape also uh, kind of works against you in the sense that it's another thing that you want to be really careful of that you don't accidentally break or chip in any way. This isn't a PVC statue off after all. So there's a lot of more things on here that you want to be really worried about. Uh, here's the close-up look at the Robin right here. You get a nice sharp pointed tongue. Works really well on this particular Robin. This one doesn't have it. Well, this one has it, but doesn't have it as much the point. He does have a good sufficient amount of blood dripped around his teeth and his mouth area, where this Robin doesn't have any of that. This one's crouched a little bit more. Actually, I mean, really, both of these are crouched, but I like that they each have unique poses to them. They simply aren't just carbon copying the exact same pose on all three of the Robins. And last but certainly not least, we have this Robin right here. The thinking Robin, I guess, if you want to look at it that way, whereas the other one's certainly more feral. This one seems like he's just biding his time, very sinisterly smiling in the background there, not showing any tongue at all, he definitely seems like he's got something on his mind, and hopefully that's not you. A nice little also touches the little slashes, something again you expect to find in comics, just little slash notations. And again, you got that bold lining with some cross hatching happening on the thigh sections of Robin, as well as in his boots as well. It very much feels, as I said before, as something you would expect to find in the comics. And maybe that's why this particular statue works very, very well in its execution. It's a little bit smaller, yes, but the trade-off for that is I feel like you got one of the better examples of Batman actually with his Robins, the Batman who laughs, that is. Normally, you do get just Batman on his own. There's been lots of statues that we I've looked at 
over the last little while of Batman Who Laughs, which is generally on his own. This is a nice treat for fans of the character to get a more affordable, by comparison to some of those $1,000 statues on the market, this one you get as much bang for your buck because you actually get yourself a Batman Who Laughs, and then of course you get your three respected Robins all sort of hovering around him. Like Batman's going to be sending the dogs out to fetch their dinner. It's a really effective looking statue and very cool on display. In final looks, I decided to change things up a bit and swapped out his mace in favor of his Z5K firearm. I still don't like it as much. I think of anything, if I picture the Batman who laughs walking around with his Robins, he's probably wielding a mace. It is more fun that way to bash somebody's brains in than simply just shoot them. But the option is still available. DC Collectibles includes both hands, so if you want to swap that out, you're more than happy to. I'm just, again, probably sticking with the ball mace. I think that's just my preferred choice. This is a nice looking statue. It's offsetting slightly. Don't let the price throw you guys off if you're looking to pick up this one for yourself. It's smaller for what you would expect for a 200 plus statue. Normally statues of this size usually sit around the 100 to $150, but this one's a little bit more. Chalk it up to the fact that the Batman Who Laughs for one of the first times actually comes included with his three Robins, which is a nice touch to include those, as some of the instances we've seen in the past, the Batman Who Laughs is usually on his own. The three Robins are exquisitely detailed, each one of them horrific from the last. They all are unique to one another. I'm still kind of a little uneasy to the fact that the one that's standing behind the Batman who laughs is sort of leaning off to the side. I can't tell you the number of times I checked that peg to make sure it was securely in place, and it is. That's just the way that it's designed to have the character standing slightly off to the side, leaning off the end of the base. The base is small, it's thin, but it's a well-executed base, and it works perfectly for these characters. This is a statue that has a lot of intricate pieces to it. Thin, thin fingernails, thin fingers I should say, capes, tongues, and everything else that could potentially break. You'll find it here on this particular statue. You also have to run the risk of kind of finagling then of course the chain from the leash to attach it to all three of Robin's collars. But again, take my advice, it's probably a lot easier attaching it to the collars first and then putting the Robins down. You can do whatever you want, really. But that's what I did, and I found that that worked. The fact that we also did, do get ourselves a real chain is a nice touch. It does involve a little extra work on your part, but the end result is a pretty effective, neat-looking, cell-shaded representation of the Batman Who Laughs. You could say cell-shaded. You could say the way he looks in the comics. Either way, it's a different look to the character, and it's a look to this statue that I like, I, I like so much. It's a really neat looking piece. If you have the available funds available to pick up a Batman Who Laughs statue, I would say spend the necessary funds and pick this one up for yourself. You won't be disappointed. Again, a lot of people may look at this as a $200 statue. Ouch. Actually, this one was closer about $210, $218. And that might be, again, a bit of a steep price to look at a statue. But when you keep in mind some of the other Batman Who Laughs statues from other manufacturers, some of those are getting closer to the $1,000 to $2,000 price point. At that rate, and the funds that I have available, I think I would rather negotiate the idea with my wallet of spending $200 and getting a piece that looks just as effective and cool. And I might also add, takes up a whole lot less space. What do you guys think of the Dark Knights, Metal, the Batman Who Laughs, and Robin Minions? A bit of tongue twister I'm finding to say Dark Knight's Metal. I feel like I want to say Dark Knight Metals. Just a little side quip. Anyways, if you manage to pick up this statue for yourself, let me know down below in the comment section what you guys think of it or based on this review and this review alone. If you guys also want to go back and have a look at some of the other DC collectible statues that I've looked at up to this point and beyond, there is going to be a playlist for DC collectibles. Feel free to check out some of those reviews when you have the available time. And if you have the available time right now and you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button down below, hit that bell notification, and of course keep your peepers peeled because there's going to be a whole lot of videos coming your way. As always, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys next time.